What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr, and today I'm bringing you another live duel from Locals. On the top we've got myself playing U-Belt, and on the bottom we have Snake Eye Fire King. So we're just going to do the dice roll, probably should have waited for that first before I did the opening hand of five. So it looks like I get to go first, and the opening hand is two infinite impermanences, a Ghost Ogre, and a Nightmare Pain, with, uh, I believe it's a Dark Monster in hand, I hope it's a Dark Monster in hand. Yep, Spirit of Ubel. So we're going to be popping Spirit of Ubel, which is quite ideal, to be honest. Obviously, what would have been more ideal is to have the starter. And now I'm pretty much questioning, do I go for said starter in the form of Samsara D Lotus, or do I go for the Grave Squirmer? Uh, and the reason you'd go for the Grave Squirmer is if they do have something like a Droll or anything else, you're still able to play because you'll be able to get Ubel off a of Spirit of Ubel. You'll be able to special summon down the Grave Squirmer. You'll maintain your normal summon uh, and everything else. So you already see... At this point, you'll probably feel a little bit safe from something like an Ash Blossom and a Ghost Ogre because you would expect Ghost Ogre to be hit or dropped on uh, the Nightmare Pain. So this is going to give us access to U-Bell, which means we can go for the Grave Squirmer. I like using Grave Squirmer as a fair because it lets me pop the U-Bell and then float into a Terra Incarnate. So as long as you're going to use it as Link Fodder, basically what you're doing is you're deck thinning for later plays. Obviously, when we do get Phantom of U-Bell, please be in Battles of Legend, uh, you'd actually be even better doing that because then you can spin back two zeros. Uh, and that would then get you direct access to your Phantom of Ubel, which means you're protected from Nibiru. So anything I need to be quite fearful of right now is probably a Nibiru or just a massively delayed Ash or Imperm. So you can kind of feel that at this point I've let go of the possibility of an Ash or an Imperm. And we're going to go for Spirit of Ubel, bringing that back with the Grey Squirmer, use Shavara to pop that, bring back the original Ubel. And then we're going to go through the Princess combo line. So Princess into... Um, so link into the princess using y Yama and Shavara. Again, I made a massive miss up on this one. Is I didn't put rage into rotation. What a dummy. Uh, what I should have done is gone into rage. And uh, I didn't. So I was too concerned about leaving you bell on the board this time. Which is just... What a what a div. Anyway, we're going to link those into the Amberwell. And I basically just sped up too much. I was like, yeah, okay, I've got, I've got this, I've got this. And I was like, mm, where's rage? Why isn't rage in the graveyard? I was like, oh, you fool, you didn't even get Rage into rotation. I haven't used the normal summon, so technically if I wanted to, I could normal summon down the um, Ghost Ogre, but that's not really going to get anywhere. So we're going to normal summon the Ghost Ogre, but that's not going to get me into like a Rage or anything. So we go into SP Little Knight. Finally, um, obviously, luckily, I was at a 14 card extra deck, so I was just able to find my SP Little Knight and then put it back in, which is correct. I shouldn't have, I only did this because I didn't have Sam Sorry D Lotus rotating around or anything else. So it could have been, it should have been better. But two Imperms and uh, pretty much wasted back row, to be honest. Uh, I should have gone into an Appaloosa, to be completely fair. Starting off with Normal Summon Poplar. That can never be good if they've Normal Summon Poplar because then it means they don't have an Ash uh, and they don't have anything else. So we're going to use SP Little Knight. We're going to get rid of it. Trying to save the Imperm that if they do, um, if they do already hard open the opening of the Spirit Gates or anything else, we can still kind of play around it. It looks like there is a uh, Birch in the hand. So they're just questioning on Birch being a quick effect. I was like, it's not a quick effect to summon. It's a quick effect to send during your opponent's turn. So we're going to banish both of those in Poplar. And obviously the reason I got rid of the Poplar was it's like, yeah, okay, you can get the search, but then you don't have a Fire Monster on the board for your Fire King strategies. It means you're going to need to start burning through more of your hand resource. I probably could have just impermed it, which would have been a little bit smarter. Um... But then obviously now knowing with hindsight, Birch would have came down anyway. So obviously going for the original Sins. Original Sins, Sins still needs to send a face up. And luckily they've opened up Sanctuary. So they're going to activate the Sanctuary but not place the island. Does that mean they've hard opened the island? If they have, that's pretty tragic. Um, not to mention once you go into Ash, Ash is going to obviously get hit with the Imperm. Like, there's no way I'm letting that resolve. So that's going to get hit with the first Imperm. And then we've got Oak that's going to be coming down. Uh, not Oak, sorry, Birch is going to be coming down. And now it's like, okay, cool. Birch has the effect to send you in my turn. So it's like, do I need to stop it? Probably not really. Um, so it looks like they've hard opened up a Flameberg, a Garura, and a Fire King Circle, I believe it is. So we're going to link both of those into Heater. Obviously, I do have a Fire in the Graveyard in the form of Shavara and Princess. And it's like, what do you want? And he goes, I'm going to take your princess. And I'm like, mm, probably shouldn't let you do that. Because then princess just revives. And it's like, okay, well, let's... If I imperm the heater, does it just end the turn there? So we're going to imperm the heater. It's going to turn that one off as well. 
I think, I, I mean, we're not so fickle on this one, but we probably should be. I'm pretty sure the original sin was was played in the center column, which is obviously an imperm column, and so is the fire king circle. So it's just like, okay, cool. As a note, it's in the imperm column, but you know, like I said, we're a little bit lenient at locals. Probably shouldn't be as lenient as we are, but no one wants to be that guy to say, yeah, that's in the imperm, imperm column when you're you're at locals. But yes, um, both spells have been activated in the imperm column, so technically they should both be negated. So we're going to be using that to destroy that to bring back the Ash. Ash can still use its send effect, but we're also going to use the Garur in the hand, which is what we're going to set up. But I believe they've hard opened up the only Flameberg that they have, or Flame Burge that they have. We've now obviously got Princess that can start to trigger, but I was trying to make sure I didn't fire lock myself because it's not something I want to be doing. But we'll get rid of Amberwell, we'll get rid of the uh, Garunix. Garunix will still resolve. I probably should have got rid of the Ash, which would have been the better option i suppose because we're now just going to send the avata Advata's going to revive the garura uh the grunix and i kind of want my opponent to destroy my monster though because like, i don't want to be princess fire locked and if they destroy it i can then float back uh, my yama and i've also got yama that can still float back as well so as long as you don't put it into an extra monster zone we're in a good stead so we're going to go into the Relinquish Anima and we're going to use those both of those to go into the Dark the Dark Charmer. We're going to use Dark the Dark Charmer's effect to try and revive, I believe it's y uh, Yama or Yubel. It goes for original Yubel. That's, uh, don't know why he's done that. That makes no sense whatsoever because that's not going to do anything for you. Apart from the fact that if I attack it, you'll, I'll take damage. But other than that, uh, it seems to be... Just as a note, that th this person doesn't have an SP Little Knight, so if you're like wondering why they haven't used that, that would be why, which is completely understandable. Like, at a local environment, unless you're a competitive player, you're not really going to have, or you've had really good pull luck, you're not going to have an SP Little Knight, sadly, until we get a reprint. So hopefully we get a reprint soon. We're going to pass a the turn there. They should, definitely shouldn't have taken that. Should have taken the Yama and then made like a Link 4. Um, and they didn't even put, they didn't get their Princess in rotation... So they probably should have brought back... You should have gone Princess. So confused why they haven't done that. Anyway, I'll use my Princess. We'll bring back the Shavara. And the reason we're going to do that is I need to get out of the Firelock. Very silly, but uh, that's part of it. And that's why I now play Nightmare Unicorn, because Fiend and Fire. So it gets me out of that lock quite nicely. It means I've got the ability of activating Nightmare Pain if I need to. And we both remember that SP Little Knight and the Poplar both come back. So just an oversight. Like I said, it's locals. It's just trying to remember these triggers and remember these resolutions. So a big note to know. But um, yeah, don't go crazy. We do fix it eventually. <laughs> Bear with us. Patience, okay? So carrying on. Obviously, we've got the trap card set. And again, this is where I've kind of messed myself up by not having rage and rotation, which is a big issue. We're going to activate this. We're going to bring back the Yama. This is going to give me the ability to kind of link climb higher and start using my opponent's monsters as link fodder. So that's kind of what we ideally want to be doing. So we're going to use Phoenix just to get rid of the extra monster zone, going to Anguish. Anguish is going to link with my own new bell because I want that in my graveyard ready to go. I'm going to have to go into a Rage, unfortunately. Um, trying to remember what the card in the middle is. Is it a Grey Squirmer? It might be a Grey Squirmer. But we've now got a Rage, which means we're going to be able to play. Yeah, it was a Grey Squirmer. So we got that on the board, so I've got a Dart to destroy. Technically, I could have destroyed my... Um, Rage and then Rage would have got me some resource, but I didn't have Samsara into rotation yet. So Samsara into uh, Spirit. Spirit's going to get me access to the internal, which is quite important. Obviously, I don't have the discard to Super Poly as of yet, but I still have that ability to loop back a U Bell, especially with Nightmare Pain in play. This is going to give me enough damage to keep moving. So we're going to bring back a U Bell. Unfortunately, there isn't a huge amount of damage on the board, and um, I definitely miscalculated the defense on Poplar. And the attack of Rage, because Rage is only 18, and um, Dark is an 1850. Big sad on that one. So it's kind of like, yeah, okay, cool, I can attack into Rage, and I can uh, I can attack the Charmer twice with the U-Bell monsters to get the damage, but I don't have enough to finish the game, like, completely OTK, which I probably should have done, to be honest, is I could overlay both U-Bell and Spirit to get into the rank 10. Rank 10 can uh, declare an attack. Pop the Dark... And then, so I pop the pop the dart by attack, pop the poplar via its own effect, and then go in from there. But yeah, you gotta be a little bit careful here. So we're gonna attack the poplar. The pop is gonna go into the spell and trap zone. Probably should have bounced the card, but this is obviously gonna go in main phase two. We're gonna go into the rank ten. 
So rank 10 is just going to give you that defensive outlay. I, I did attack the Dark Charmer twice, so don't worry, that did happen. So there is 1850 damage twice, which is 36, 37. So 3700 damage. I've got the rank 10, just gives me the Omni Negate. So at the moment, I've got the Rage that can link off with the Charmer, which will give me the access to another Link Monster. And again, I think I've made the fatal error of running out of Dark Targets in my extra deck, which is real annoying. So that's something that I've learned. I'm going to go for Oak, attempt to use Oak's effect. I'm going to use the uh, Valdris effect. I'm just saying that I'm debating if I want to destroy it because you have to detach an additional material to do so. So we will negate and destroy the uh, Birch. Obviously, got the Grunix in the graveyard to float back, which is absolutely fine because it gives me access. To, it's technically a special monster, but like I said, I've, I've made the fatal error of not having more Dark Monsters in the extra deck. So that's something that I need to work on when I'm putting this together. I never really expect to get everything going through it, but we'll use SP Little Knight. We're going to banish Dark the Dark Charmer and um, itself when the Grunix effect is activated on the destruction of Birch. This will then destroy a card in the, in the graveyard. Uh, sorry, destroy a card from the deck, which ideally you're probably going to go for the Kirin for destroying a destroy and a revival. So on the effect of the Kirin in the graveyard to destroy, obviously it's non-target destroy, but it revives and then destroys. We're going to chain the Rage. Do I have a target left? I must do. <laughs> yeah, I had to go into Muck Crocker. How depressing is that? I had to go into Muck Crocker just so I could use one of my opponent's monsters. So big, big issue on that one. So we've got rid of the Garunix. It brings back the Avata, which goes into defense and then destroys a card in the field, which he goes to the Nightmare Pain rightly slow because that's like your ideal win con. That's where you're going to get all the damage from. So smart choice on that one. Unfortunately, the board is not strong enough to kind of do anything. It's got an Avata, which has a bit of a negate on it, depending on what else they have access to. Other than that, it's just got the Garunix in the graveyard that will float. But we've got the Viratus, and we're going to activate the trap card to bring back. Now, obviously, there's no chain on this one, which is obviously what I probably should have done is try to chain it to an effect, and that would have got me another Nightmare Pain. But what I was trying to do is get two U-Bell monsters on the board just to make rank 10s or just to make some more link plays, which is quite easily done. I'm highly tempted to put the Abomination back into this deck just because I quite like it as an option. When I destroy a card with Viratus, I can then destroy another card. So it's like a two-for-one kind of deal. So without Nightmare Pain, no damage is going to get dealt through my Yubel attacks. So I do need to get that into rotation. I probably held the Trap card back a little bit too long and I probably should have activated it as Chain Link 2 so that I didn't negate my own Spirit's effect, which would have got me into Nightmare Pain, which, again, pretty much sets up your OTK play. I still have the discard and the revive off of the Muckcrocker as well. So that can get me another Fiend Monster back into rotation, but then it means you still need to get to the extra deck in order to, or like you still need to get a Fiend Monster that's going to be useful for you. So we'll bring back a, what are we going to bring back? I mean, for, for aggression, you could technically bring back your, um, I keep forgetting the, keep forgetting the SP Little Knight. Apologies, guys. Um, but we could be bringing back the, I mean, could bring back the Anguish to get you into an Abomination. That would have been pretty spicy. But you can also bring back, um, ironically, bring back Princess. And then Prince, Princess could bring back another one. But there's nowhere else you can kind of go. This is just about getting some aggression on the board to try and pick this board apart. And then moving for the OTK. Obviously, I don't want to destroy the Fire Monster because the Garura, uh, the Grunix will just float back around. So, so we're going to link, link four into an Underworld Goddess, which gets rid of the... Avatar, which is this is how awkward it was is i had to go into the underworld goddess to get rid of the Avatar because i was fiend locked um and then we kind of just go from there to finish the game off so we'll destroy the dark charmer obviously they can trigger the effect to search i don't think they've got any targets left uh yeah and they hard open the flameberg and then the rest just finishes the game off obviously didn't use sp little knight that turn so i could still attack directly uh, and we're gonna pretty much shuffle up and, and go into game two after siding so this one they actually decide to let me go first which was quite interesting and you'll also it was a good idea because you'll see the hand that they get is actually really good for breaking boards. So going second, the hand's pretty crapped. Like Suripoli and Duster. And the reason they've got Suripoli is that they they know there's a lot of um U Bells in at the local environment. So Super Poly into their own U Bell is pretty funny. But we're gonna go into Fenrir, and I haven't opened up that well uh, in regards to like board presence and board monsters. So it, it kind of works out in my favour because if I had gone like any harder. They would have been able to like you bell and kind of moved on. And unfortunately, I've had to go into Fenrir set one pass. And I'm like, okay, cool. What you got? 
So it kind of makes the rest of that hand, like they've got a Talents, uh, a Duster, a Super Poly and a Varta. So we're going to go with Duster and it's like, yeah, okay, cool. It was a bluffed evenly match because I wasn't expecting to be made to go first. There's an Instant Fusion there. And the reason they play that is they play uh, Millennium Eyes. It looks like there's also a Nibiru as well. So I've kind of played under that flukily. So it's set one, set two, set the Avatar and pass. So they haven't, they've opened up board breakers, but they didn't open up a starter, which is just unfortunately part and part of it. The other benefit is because all those cards are face down, I can't do anything, but I can use Fenrir to search. I'm kind of playing into a draw a little bit there, but also trying to bait out an interaction on Fenrir. Doubt it's going to happen, but it also gives you free discard fodder that if I have my own super poly. Not that I can poly with their face down monster, but just something of note. So we're going to activate a one for one, which is the discard of a Fenrir. So free discard fodder. Yay. Uh, let's get you into Samsara D Lotus, and we're pretty much just going to make our plays from there. Or attempt to, anyway. We've got to be careful of the Ash Blossom, but if one for one isn't Ashed, um, I'll be amazed if they let you get the Samsara D Lotus. So we know there is a Super Poly along the back row. Obviously, I don't know that at this exact moment in time. But again, that's why kind of technically Super Poly is pretty funny in this matchup, because it's like as soon as I put a U Belmonster on the board and they use Super Poly, I lose everything, which is, uh, yeah. So here comes Spirit of Ubel off the back of the Samsara D Lotus to get the Nightmare Pain. Um, so we're going to use Nightmare Pain to get rid of the Spirit of Ubel. Probably could have Super Poly a little bit earlier, but I suppose if they get rid of this, uh, well, yeah, they probably should have Super poly earlier because I couldn't get the Grey Squirmer. Um, we're going to destroy the Ubel to float into a Terra Incarnate. We're just trying to burn through our deck to get rid of the, like, the one-off bricks you don't really want to see. Again, it's still a U-Bell monster, so at any point they're like, yeah, cool, I can super poly. Um, but the smart thing to do would be to hold back the for when I use the Grey Squirmer. Obviously, I'm not expecting super poly in this matchup whatsoever. Uh, it makes sense afterwards because the amount of U-Bells that are at locals, but you know, we're going to go for Shavara, and it's just like, okay, cool, how far do I go? And I suppose the second that I use the Grey Squirmer and bring back, that's when super poly is at its most dangerous to this build. Or to, to kind of break my board. Obviously, still got Shavara, and we still have the um, Yama that could float from the grave as well. So you could you could leave it a little bit later if you wanted to. Like I've got nothing that can stop that Super Poly. I can force it early doors if I'm that fearful of it. But I'm not going to make Nightmare Unicorn to try and deal with that back row. So we bring back the Spirit of U Bell. Obviously, want to use Shavara, and this is where he like hits me pretty hard with his Super Poly. I'm like, ah, yes. Obviously, I wasn't expecting him to be main decking the Love and Defender forever either, but here we are. Discards the talents, which I didn't walk into, which is also pretty funny. I'm surprised he used his own Avatar and he forgot the Yama, which, you know, does make me go, um, I think he used the wrong monsters on that one, buddy. And I, again, that's probably from him watching... U bells and know that U bell always leaves an opponent with a monster so it can attack into it, but then kind of went, wait a minute, I'm not playing U bell, I'm playing Snake Eyes. Like that doesn't benefit me at all. Um, so forgetting the armor is is going to prove quite costly because that leaves me with a fiend on the board, which I can obviously tribute off with Shavara if I wanted to. I've already used the Gray Squirmer. I've got no Gate of the Dark um, Gate of the Dark World, the Spirit Gates. So again, it kind of yeah, it kind of, kind of probably could have been a tad bit better. But unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Still not a huge amount that I can do. Like, I can't kill that U-Bell either because it can't be destroyed by battle, which is really annoying. Though it would be very funny if I steal it. So we use Shavara to pop the set um, evenly matched. This will then allow me to link into the princess. And we'll just go princess. Uh, Abomination, sorry. Yeah, Abomination to Rage. That's also quite funny. Or an SP Little Knight and deal with that back row. That would probably be the better option. But I suppose if I go into Rage, I just link off with whatever they summon the next turn into SP and then deal with both in the same go. So Rage. I'll also get a bit of damage on the board if I do it this way as well. Rage, Poke for 18. Unless, oh, I think it's a Nibiru. Oh, yeah, I ran straight into a Nibiru. Oh. Uh... Bro, that Nibiru is weak ass as well. It's like zero defense and eight in attack. And put it into the extra monster zone, which is correct, because obviously you then make um, Relinquish Anima and steal it. And you're like, yep, yeah, cool. <laughs> so Nibiru and Super Poly, and not that the Duster made much of a difference the last turn. What is the top deck, sir? 
Oh no, he's another Flameberg. He's hard open the Flameberg. Oh, but he's got the instant fusion, which is is kind of good because you get you into the um, Millennium Eyes, and then the Millennium Eyes can steal the token, and the token's got eighteen. Uh, and if you're wondering why I didn't set a track card off the Shivara, is I took it out because I thought I was going second, so I was like, okay, we're just going to go for a. I probably shouldn't have done, but probably going to go for an OTK. And I was like, yeah, you definitely want to be putting that there so you can take the token. <laughs> he was jokingly like, can I put it in the main one? I was like, no, 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 you can't. So we've got Anima going in for 18. We're going to use Spirit of You Bell to summon itself down, triggering its effect. Uh, this will get me the trap card, Eternal Favorite. I'm going to set that one rather than add it to the hand. And then they're forced to attack, so they're going to take 4,800, which is quite damaging. So you can see that, like, this is why I quite like having free spirit as U-Bells, because a lot of people forget this battle trap effect. More times than not, it is probably not going to come off. They'll probably have a negate at some point or some way to stop it. But if they leave Nightmare Pain on the board and they're like, oh, I've got an empty board, I don't need to worry about Nightmare Pain. And then they attack and you go, ha, ah, spirit of u -Bell. Then it's like, got him. So you're going to link two into Dark the Dark Charmer. Going to try and revive. <laughs> what do you want? And it's like... The irony is, if they have a dark monster in their extra deck, I'm pretty sure they could use an anguish on me, which would be very funny. Um, that'd actually be really funny, actually, if they took the anguish and then try and linked, linked with my uh, spirit of you, Bell. <laughs> oh dear, there must be a dark monster in there. Why did you take the Terra Incarnate? What a terrible decision. Why? Why would you do? I think they just saw something shiny and was like, "Yeah, I'll take that." Just why? Oh, dear, oh dear. Sometimes I'm not going to question the madness that happens at locals. So obviously end phase, uh, Terran Carnet blows up, gives me U Bell. Draw phase, we're going to activate Eternal Favorite. Not using the effect as of yet, I don't believe. Could be wrong. But like, all I do is bring back Spirit and it's a level 10 monster on the board. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Obviously, I need to be careful with the Terra Incarnate because if I attack it, I will take some damage. So, what do we got? I'm trying to think what else there is. So, Nightmare Pain could destroy a U-Bell, but I can't float into Terra Incarnate because he's taking it. So, on that odd bit of chance with him taking that, um, taking the Terra Incarnate, it stops my U-Bell floating, which is quite annoying. And I can't really bring back Spirit because if I bring back Spirit, again, I can't destroy it and float into a U-Bell because I'm only playing one. What we got still going end phase. Yeah, Terran Khan is only during your end phase. So we're going end phase, bring back the Samsara D Lotus. Um technically I could destroy U Bell, which is also pretty funny. Because I can destroy the U Bell via its own effect and keep Samsara on the board. And then it means I can use Eternal Favorite to bring back the U Bell, and then I've got that into rotation. So I still haven't used the trap card yet. So in the end phase, we're gonna use the trap card and bring back U Bell. So I've kind of set up my negate on this one. Nothing's going to happen because Terra Incarnate is 0-0, zero, zero, so there's no damage that's going to happen between Terra Incarnate and u -Bell. Pretty funny that they're on opposing boards. It looks like there is still a Flameberg and an Oak. Is that right? Is that an Oak in the hand? It's definitely a Flameberg, and then it's like, is that an Oak or not? Uh, at any moment, I can use the Eternal Favorite to link with the board, uh, to fuse with the board as well. So that's something they're probably trying to play around with and try and be a little bit more... I probably should have just added the Lotus to the hand. Like, there's no need for, for it to be on the board. Like, nothing's really going to happen with it. Like, I can't... I destroy my own U-Bell, but I can't float into my own Terra Incarnate. It's just like, bro, can you... um, Can you not, please? So it's just been a little bit more annoying. So we're going to tribute that. We'll destroy both. Uh, well, not destroy both, sorry. Destroy my U-Bell. We're going to trigger the Yama effect. The Yama effect is going to let me float back into a Spirit or an Anguish. Did I have a rage? Did I just go into an anguish without going into a rage? What a foolish play that is. Um, and then we're going to use Eternal Favorite to bring back Spirit. So this was during the end phase once Terra Incarnate blows up. We top deck a Terraforming. Finally, Nightmare Throne. Oh, oh that's why I went for anguish because obviously it's go it was going back to my turn. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Have I got any more dark targets? Gate of the day, uh, gate... Open the spirit gates. Um, now, now I start seeing all my openers. What the hell is going on? So dark beckoning, overlay dark beckoning. So obviously it was terraforming into gates, and then we're going to go into the gym buster in case he's hard opened up a Nibiru. So we're trying to be a little bit careful here on that one now. 
So we've got the Gym Buster to deal with the Biru. We're gonna go into SP Little Knight. We're not gonna use SP Little Knight's effect because if I do that, I can't attack directly. That would be foolish. Um, we're gonna discard a Fenrir off of the Spirit Gates to bring back a monster, which will be U Bell, and then we're gonna overlay both into the Varadis. Keep in mind that they've already taken uh, 4,800 damage through the previous play. So now it's literally just deck thinning as much as you possibly can. I don't need to be doing this. I completely forgot they had already taken damage. I probably should have just looked at the life points because just going into SP Little Knight and a Gym Buster is 31 or something. But we're basically just looping our resources at this exact moment in time. It's just over overkill. I shouldn't be doing this. I should just be going in for the attack. Uh, and the reason I haven't used the throne yet is because obviously we've gone through quite a few. So we're going to go into Appaloosa, which is 8, 16, 24, plus the Gym Buster is enough for game. But like I said, I've completely forgotten at this point that they've already taken damage. So I'm just trying to get the 8k on the board. Overlay into two, and there's pretty much your 8k. So that's 54 plus another 13, and then attack, and that's game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, happy dueling.